Grim is one of my most used pocket slot items, but sometimes I don't feel like paying for the Grim pages. And that is where today's guide is coming into play. Today I'll be showcasing how I go solo Solak when I just want to relax and get a decent number of kills per hour using Magic Camp, because there are times where I don't want to go with a full sweat method, I just want to relax, get some kills, fill up the Grim, and then go back to sweating some other boss. So without any further delay, let's go ahead and get into this guide. Taking a look at the gear here in the inventory and worn equipment, it's pretty straightforward as far as magic camp is concerned. I am just using the refined Sliske armor. If I right click here and hit select effect, I can mimic the Tusker War Priest effect, which basically gives you, I think it's around 6% extra crit chance, which happens to be a couple percent of DPM when using magic because of how FSOA works. Compared to the extra magic damage bonus that elite tech would normally give this armor still comes out on top for now if you have elite tech it works perfectly fine for soloing sliske just adds a little bit of damage on the top end but for farming out grim pages either is going to work solak is poisonable so i have cinder banes here that's pretty self-explanatory the dedo boots are best in slot detonates a nice ability mostly for the damage there isn't really any aoe here other than dealing with arms and legs like i mentioned in the intro grim is going to be best in slot for magic because we want all the crit chance we can possibly get. I have praisals here. If you have seismics, that's going to be fine, but either praisals or seismics will work here. They're going to do a majority of the damage. I have the nexus equipped just because it's more convenient to have bone shield or greater bone shield. And with the Zamorgiel's nexus, it upgrades it to a tier 75 shield. So you get pretty good resonances out of it. It's strong enough for it to make sense. If you don't want to use it or you don't have the nexus, you can bring a T90 shield swap and it'll work perfectly fine. I have Chandler's Ring here just because it helps with averaging out kills and it helps average out your DPM more so than Reaver's Ring which is going to have a slightly wider bell curve meaning that you can get potentially more damage in your sunshine and non-sunshine rotations with Reaver's Ring because it allows everything to have a flat 5% chance to crit but with the Chandler's Ring and its effect you're going to have a more averaged out damage but that average is going to be slightly higher. Honestly just pick whichever one one you like and go forward you should be fine and zuck cape is definitely a requirement for doing this it buffs omni power to the moon it doesn't have to be the hybrid one if you have the standard mage one from normal mode zuck you'll be just fine in the eofs i have ibn staff here and i went ahead and brought along a gothic staff and an abs the abs i'm kind of experimenting with to see if i actually like it or not in my magic dps guide i stated that i don't really care for armadal battle staff and it's very niche to be used mostly in cases with Zamorak, although some people have been experimenting using Channeler's Ring and just hitting G-Conk, keeping your dual wield on and using ABS. Apparently it does good damage. I'm going to keep testing with it, but I went ahead and put all of these EOFs in here just to show that you really have a lot of freedom with your presets, and there's a lot of room here to move items around should you want to bring something else. The one that gets mostly used for me is Iben Staff or sometimes a Gothic Staff or a Stubborn Root. I do bring an FS away because the spec is very strong for magic however i do bring inquisitor staff because it works and with the enchantment that you can get from the zami dungeon using those slivers and a couple other components to craft it once you unlock it you get an additional five percent damage on your inquisitor so i believe it effectively is like a tier 105 or tier 104.8 somewhere around there very very strong i do have a flanking swap here it is kind of nice for clearing out roots and it is also nice nice for the core if you happen to get in position for it but it's mostly just nice for root clearing or if you want to have flank on p4 you can go ahead and do that but if you don't have one just bring in something else like an extra portent of restoration by the way these portents they're pretty easy to craft up you just need some incandescent energy and some cooked rock tails and then you can make these and they just automatically consume once you're below 50 hp they don't take any adrenaline like normal solids would and they just proc on their own so if you have spare inventory space don't know what to do with it just toss a couple of these in for food i do bring super ceridomen brews and i do bring blue blubber jellyfish honestly this is a bit overkill for doing solo solak especially if you're not going to do storm skip if i'm on this chill kind of setup just doing more casual kills i usually don't do storm skip because i find it largely obnoxious but if you want to sweat and do storm skip you can add in or take away food that you see fit for how much you're going to be using and how much you want to soul split flick the rune pouch setup here is the same rune pouch setup as I use in pretty much any other guide that I have made, but feel free to pause
pause the video and see which runes I have in each of them, but it gives me access to every spell on most spell books, at least all of the functional ones that I need. And other than that, I just bring a blessed flask for prayer consumption. You can get away with using just powder of penance, but sometimes I forget to equip it for the full hour, or sometimes I might die from just not paying attention and forget to reactivate powder of penance. And so I just bring a blessed flask as a spare. Vuln bombs are pretty self-explanatory. They're lossless. You don't have to wait a game tick or a global cooldown to toss them out. You can just instantly yeet them. I do bring a spare overload just in case the kill runs a little bit long. And that's about it for all of the gear and whatnot, at least kind of like the main preset. As far as perks go, I'm just kind of using standard perks here. I have C4, R5, and Impatient 4, Genocidal. Now the Impatient 4 uh, could just be comboed with Devoted 4, or if you want mobile up here, that will work perfectly fine. The Genocidal is actually there for farming out uh, Vorkath and Karapak. And on the bottom here, I have Invig 4 and Biting 4. You can combo a mobile in wherever you need to, honestly. It would be better to have a Devoted 4 with Impatient 4, but I'm pretty lazy about swapping perks around, so it is what it is. On the weapons, they're pretty much just old standard best in slot. I have P6 Aftershock 1, and then Aftershock 4 Eruptive 2. And then on the staffs, I have Precise 6 and Aftershock 4 with Eruptive 2, and the Ruthless 1 in there. The Inquisitor doesn't have Ruthless 1. I keep telling myself I'll fix it, and then I never do, so I'm just kind of lazy with it. Although at Solak, that's not going to matter, because you aren't really killing anything else that would be giving you Ruthless stacks other than the core and the eruptions. So it could be useful there for your initial sun after the eruptions are dead. However, it's not going to make that much of a difference. Now, as far as supporting gear goes, I just use the Quarm, Lantadime, and Spirit Weed Incense. You could skip on Spirit Weed Incense because we'll be using the Calgarian Demon, and it only uses one scroll a minute. So honestly, just skip on the Spirit Weed and the Summoning Renewal, but I would use a triple plus Weapon Poison, and I have an Overload that I sip at the bank. I also normally grab a Bonfire at Wars, and I do the Ogre Thermal Bath that I have here in flask form. It's just a daily that you can go do. Powder of Penance, I do scatter these, and they'll pretty much keep up with the Prayer Demand because Solak has 100% accuracy on you. And for Relics, uh, these are the wrong ones. Uh, ignore that uh, relics. I have Death Ward, Conservation of Energy, Fury of the Small. This is a pretty basic, straightforward setup. You could swap out these two for Zerker's Fury and with Font of Life. Or if you don't have mobile on your armor, you could go with Shadow's Grace as well. Zerker Fury will give you a bit more damage output because you're usually going to be on anywhere from a third to half HP at any given point. Sometimes you'll heal up for bombs, but we'll get into that later. I like to keep it simple and just run Death Ward and Fury of the Small small and I pretty much use this combo everywhere. But with all that being said, let's go ahead and actually just run an example kill. Alrighty, let's run an example kill. So what I do here is I'll use Maniacal Aura. I just use it over Majra. If you want to run Majra and take a little bit less damage, that's more than acceptable. Both are going to do roughly the same amount of damage as far as a casual solo is concerned. It's not going to make too much of a difference, but I do like running Manny. But then we will just go ahead and start this kill. Now, Dominion Mines do not work on the roots here. They hit for 10,000 HP each or sometimes up to, I believe, like 11 and a half in some use cases with the current update. But these roots are only seven and a half K, so there's not enough HP there for them to work. And other than that, once I'm in the instance, I'll just surge dive over to this tile and then I move up one. Then I'll go ahead and hit reprisal and toss a Vuln Bomb with my Sun Start, right click Quick Start, and then Target Cycle, Smoke Cloud into a G Conk and a D Breath, Auto, not, auto Tempest into a Magma FSOA spec. And then just kind of do some damage from here. Do like a G Conk into a Auto to a G Conk into a Wild to hit a Sphix. Except that was a, I think it was a full four hit. Oops. Charge a Pedetto, release with an Omni. Just make sure you disrupt this bomb hit and then just kind of do some damage. Maybe use an Ibin Staff here into a Tendrils. Go for a Wild Magic Asphyx. And I'm just gonna let this Asphyx, Asphyx play out. And then just kind of use some Bleeds here. Maybe go for a res just because I can. And then I'll just go ahead and start getting on the roots while the bleeds are playing out. We have Omni Power back, so we can use that to go ahead and phase him with maybe an extra G Conk. 
And then we can just start killing the roots here. Bleeds work, ice rack works. And if he does phase a little bit early, if you're a little bit behind on roots, you can just kill these two on the bottom and then leave these two up here and you'll be just fine. And here, I'll just go ahead and hit an ability, target this one and put my son down here. Target the other arm, hit a G chain into an auto Nami. Hit an FSOA spec. Maybe a G conk into a rack. Just a couple basics here to finish this off. And then here I can just go ahead and G conk this route while I'm waiting. And then hit G chain on that leg, the far one. Charge up a detonate release with a dragon breath. Pop over to Xangonate if you want. And then for the core, I'll just toss a Vaughn Bomb. Hit Omni Power into a Tendrils. Into an Ivan Staff spec, and that's pretty much dead. Those are the three main things I do. And then just kill off the Slasher. Now for this part, I just do a very casual, kind of an old setup where we just go up twice. And then once you kill the Eruption, I start Southwest here and kill it. Click the center, so start the little cleanse here. And then you just dive back. Spam click the center to kill the storm. And then you'll kind of rinse repeat from the southeast. And here I'd just like to use an Omni Power to kill it as quick as possible. You're not going to be cleansing again for this one because it's not really off cooldown. And here you can toss a couple bleeds if you want to soul split up while you're up here. Because if you have a Magma Tempest or a Corrupt Blast or something, that will heal you while you're up here. But now that the storm is dead, you can just kill these two up north and just start up your phase two. Just use some basics, maybe a threshold. Maybe a blood auto, just because you can. Then cost, toss down a Vuln Bomb, make sure he's smoke clouded. Maybe get a couple bleeds off beforehand and then start a sunshine with an A-Pot. Into a G-Conk, D-Breath, I'll go ahead and hit a Auto Nami. FSOA spec, swap over to Xang, G Conk, Wild Magic, just kind of do some normal sun, sun, sunshine rotation stuff. G Conk, charge up a detonate, release with Omni, kind of what I was doing beforehand. If you only want to do two hit asphyx, that's more than fine. But I should use an Iben staff there, and I'll use Tendies to get some more Dren. If you're getting bombs here and you don't have a Vit Pot in your inventory, you can just debil Solak and they'll do half damage, which essentially kind of works like a Vit Pot. But once your sun runs out, just go ahead and do some threshold damage. Move the Combust if you want. And then for this attack here, just consume the Blessing. Wait for him to finish the voice line, click the extra action button, and I just like to reflect for this part. and just keep threshing it out. Do not start another sunshine at this point. And if you want, you can also run out and res one of the bomb hits. There are five in total. And also you, for this next part, you wanna keep Solak a little bit out so that way you don't get him on the arm mechanic on a tile which you can't attack from. But you can just free him to get out of the way or anticipate and then run up the rooted hand. And here I'll just use uh, some abilities to get more damage out and i will disrupt shield this hit because we want to save our resonance for a divert later on so you don't have our apoc quite yet and even if you do have it if the phase is going slow kind of like this one you don't want to use it because you want to save your apoc for phase four but here i'll choose some thresholds and if you're not quite 100 percent you can use uh anticipate and freedom here to get some adrenaline and then just smoke cloud sunshine i'll use g conk Hit my Divert for this Auto, and then another Basic. Auto Nami, FSOA spec, kind of rinse repeat. And then just make sure to be using your Inquisitor Staff for most of the abilities you can. G-Conk obviously can't, but is what it is. Here I'm just going to go for a two-hit Asphyx. G-Conk into a Dedo Charge, release with Omni. We got a lot of Adren re uh, refunds, so go ahead and hit Ivans into Attendees. G-Conk into another Ibon. We auto D-Breath here into a uh, Wild Magic. Use this fix for the stun. And then for this part, I'll bring him over. Just use some bleeds, maybe some leftover abilities. You can also go for a res if you don't want to eat food. 
but you can also uh, just eat to full. And here I'll just keep building stacks. Now he's on 289, which can be done for a uh, P4, but I just want to get him a little bit lower. And then we'll just go ahead and go in. Go ahead and hit Omni Power. If he's under 250, you should be fine for phase four. It won't be too much of an issue. But you can just use Threshold. Sometimes with Arador, Arithdor, you won't get it in one cycle. Sometimes you will. There, we actually got him. So we'll just go ahead and toss a Vuln Bomb. And just get our stacks up for Insight Fear. Make sure he's smoke clouded. And here I'm going to go ahead and hit Nami, FSOA, put on my Exsanguinate, and just build back up. And then go ahead and hit Metamorph, and then Limitless into a Tendrils. Use my A-Pot and use Asphyxiate for a few hits. And then I'll go ahead and hit Omni Power into a Wild Magic. Hit the Ivan Staff, and that should be it. If not, just Rack and Ruin. And there you go, that's a Solak solo. Now, I didn't explain the mechanics hyper well during that kill as I was just kind of going through it and was kind of lost for words in a few places. So I'll just go over kind of like the main mechanics again and some alternative things you can do differently should you want. So phase one, your main goal is to get him down to 1.5 mil. It is a 500k HP cap. And then once he hits that, he will just go into arms, legs indefinitely. And that's by a minute six. And the roots that spawn, if you leave them alone, they will just turn into Blightbound Lashers, they hit you with range damage and they can hurt quite bad. So it is definitely ideal to kill all of the roots, but sometimes you're a little bit behind on the root skips, so you can save the two and then just deal with them later or during arms, legs. And then after that, once you're done doing arms, legs and the core, killing the core is what will allow you to progress to phase two. And for just casual magic solos, I will just go up on Southwest and Southeast. As you probably noticed, I was a little bit late clicking on Marithal, but it is what it is. Is as long as you click on her to then start the cleanse process just before you kill your eruption in the southwest, you should be fine. And you don't need to surge down and surge around and whatnot. When you kill the core, you can just kind of run over to this general area. You'll be able to attack the eruption just fine, and you'll be able to run over for your cleanse. And then once you see the green ring disappear, that's when I immediately just dive over, and then I usually go up. Some people will go ahead and just kill the eruptions and leave the storm in the sky fully alive and that is what's known as a storm skip you take a lot of extra damage and i personally find it rather obnoxious at least when i'm just doing some chill magic solos but after that it's pretty much just doing damage uh, you should be phasing solak by the time you deal with the arm mechanic and for that one, you just use Anticipate Beforehand or Freedom to get out of the way for the insta-kill that can happen if he smacks down on top of you. And for phase four, you can also drop a Sunshine and use that instead of a Metamorph. However, I've noticed in this update that Metamorph is actually pretty nice because it allows you to go above the hit cap in some cases. Like if you're really juicing a Zerk Fury Relic and your HP is pretty far down there and you're using a Metamorph, you will see some abilities go above of kind of the old traditional hit caps that sunshine just quite won't let you do but if you feel more comfortable running a sunshine then full send that one and have fun but that is how i do solo solak if you have any questions feel free to leave it in the comments down below all right i won't leave you guys on the cliffhanger we'll see what we get for loot and just some usual junk but we did get the grim page and that is the most important part and it is why i do solo solak Anyways, that is definitely enough talking from me. Go ahead and enjoy y'all day. Thank you all very much for watching. Your viewership is greatly appreciated. Have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon, nighttime, whatever it is, wherever you are, and I'll see y'all next time for the next guide. Peace.